Today on Focal Point, we're going to learn what it's like to host the CCP TV show, the Philadelphia Cultural Forum, with our guest Kirsten Quinn. Learn what the CCP community thinks matters the most about Black History Month and discover the photo club here at the college. Stay with us. Hi, welcome to Focal Point on CCP TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm Darlene Muntz, a student in the Communications Arts Curriculum. We have an exciting show for you today. I'm here with Associate Professor of English Kirsten Quinn, the host of CCP TV's Philadelphia Cultural Forum. In addition to teaching here at the college, Kirsten is also a working actress, having appeared and starred at such venues as the Wilma, Interact Luna Theater, the Montgomery Theater, and many others. She has appeared in numerous films and commercial spots throughout New York and the tri-state area. Since she took over as the host of the Philadelphia Cultural Forum in 2012, she has showcased dozens of performers, musicians, and writers. Welcome, Kirsten. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here with you today, Darlene. Tell us a little about the Cultural Forum. How did you get involved with the program? Well, basically, um, how I started out was uh, there was actually another professor doing the show um, when the show first started. Mm -hmm. And Alan Kobernick, who is the producer here of uh, CCP TV, one of the producers, asked me if I would be interested in doing the show because the other host was leaving to go to another college. And at first I was a little nervous and a little hesitant because I had never hosted a show before. But I decided to go for it, give it a shot, you know. And I've, I've been doing it ever since and I love it. I love getting the guests, I love meeting new people such as yourself and I really enjoy doing this show. Tell us, what's it like? Tell us about the time and effort it takes to be the host of a popular program. Oh, um, it's, it's great because I get to interview new guests every week, um, but it does take some work because I have to research the guests, um, talk to them on the phone and through email, get their biographies, um, figure out the kinds of things that I'm gonna ask them. Mm -hmm. And I usually t treat the show as a conversation between myself and the other person, whoever I'm interviewing, or people. And so, um, you know, I try to be as relaxed as possible so that they're able to open up and we can just have a talk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so it, it takes some preparation, but, but it winds up being worth it in the end. Mm -hmm. Yes. Has your experience at CCP TV been what you expected? It actually has exceeded my expectations. I wasn't sure what I was getting into at first, mm -hmm. um, but the crew and the and the, the producers and everyone that works at CCP TV has been so gracious and um, so professional with me and really kind of eased me into it. And so it, it's been a great experience, and it has. It has exceeded my expectations. I, I didn't know what to expect. So, you know, it, I'm, I'm really learning a lot about being on camera. Um, I'm learning a lot about how to interview people and how to make them comfortable and also make myself comfortable um, while I'm doing it. So it, it's had a great um, learning curve for me. Are you currently working on any projects acting-wise? I am. I am doing a show called Accomplice, which is coming up in March with uh, Isis Productions at the Walnut Street Studio Theater on, on 5. And uh, it is a sort of crime thriller with some British farce elements to it. Um, so it's been a lot of fun so far, a lot of physical comedy, and I'm working with people I've worked with before, which is great, you know, yeah. That's great. Yeah. How do you find talent for your show? Well, um, you know, it's, it's actually interesting because it's very easy to find people who want to come on the show. Um, usually I approach people from CCP first mm -hmm. to see if they want to come on. I've had writers from here. I've had some students that have come on the show. Uh, I've even had a visual artist who actually painted on the show. Uh, so it's been really great finding people there. And then one of the other ways that I find guests is um, I'm a member of the Theater Alliance of Philadelphia. I get on their listserv and I put out an ad for, for the Philadelphia Cultural mm -hmm. Forum telling them what we do and the kinds of things we're looking for and the kinds of performances that we're into. Mm -hmm. And within a few days 
uh, of sending out that email, I have many, many responses, like more than I even need for the whole semester. You know, so there may be people that have contacted me in previous semesters, and I'll make sure I get to them first before I even put the ad out. Um, so it, it happens very quickly. Uh, some of the people I know, some of them I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are completely new to me. And, um, you know, I like to have a mix of different types of artists, so I try to find musicians and poets and actors and theater companies and directors and mm -hmm. um, dancers, you know, all different kinds of art forms because I want that to be, um, be shown on the show. Yeah. Okay, well, tell us, what can we expect this season? Well, we have a lot of guests that we taped for last, uh, last semester. Mm -hmm that are starting to come on now. Um, we had uh, a young girl named Nicole Enger, who is a singer-songwriter. Uh, another woman, Di Diana Neary, who's a folk singer. Uh, we've had several CCP uh, writers on the show. Um, Neil Wells is one of them. Uh, there are other theater companies that are going to be on, and we're taping quite a few shows with some filmmakers this semester. Um, we have um, more theater companies coming on. The Idiopathic Ridiculopathy Consortium is a show that we shot that we're hoping to air this semester. You want to um, tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, they're doing a show now called On Dean that's opening up soon. It's an absurdist theater. And so they've, you know, they've sort of reached out to me, and it really helps the company too, you know, to get their name out there, and it, it gives our audience a chance to get to know these these guests. And uh, we have we have lots of different shows that are coming up. I have a full docket this semester of people coming in almost every week, and great. and coming in for the show. Great, so it's going to be great. Well. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you for being with us, Kirsten. Thank you so much, Darlene. We're looking forward to the new season of the Philadelphia Cultural Forum. Thank you. Okay, now let's hear what the CCP community has to say about Black History Month. Booker T. Washington. Oprah Winfrey. Black Panther. Langston Hughes. Frederick Douglass. Barack Obama. Black History Month is important because it gives us a chance to reflect. We need to know what our black heroes did and uh, how they were able to um, impact society today and the, the contributions that they've made. I believe that African Americans need, need to understand where they're coming from. They need a source of identity. And I believe that Black History Month provides that identity for them. This month actually shines on us and it allows our people to be recognized and acknowledged for the great things that they've accomplished. Showcase what black people have done throughout the history of the United States. The things that people sacrificed for us to have what we have today. People in general should know black history. Schools hand on the top of the black history. They don't really pay as much attention as they should. You learn about Martin Luther King, King, Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Parks. Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, maybe Nat Turner if you're lucky. But you really don't hear about Stockley Carmichael, Maya Angelou, Quam Couture, W.E.B. Du Bois, Curtis Scott King, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Shirley Chisholm. You know, they give Malcolm X and then they, you know, completely dehumanize him. Then they give Martin Luther King and then they, that's it. I really believe that you need to have a more wider range. What about the events that led up to Malcolm X uh, assassination or Rosa Parks being arrested? People just need to celebrate Black History Month. Actually recognize and acknowledge the month. Allow the teachers to actually um, have some say in what's being taught. They should bring, you know, uh, African Americans who are, who are, you know, uh, the, at the pedestal of success. They should bring them over to the schools, to the universities, to the high schools. They should have mentors. I mean, in high school, I would have I liked to have a um, Black History course. Wow, very interesting. Did you know that Community College of Philadelphia has a photo club? Check this out. Uh, Photography Club, very interesting organization here in uh, Community College of Philadelphia. It started on a whim uh, back in uh, 2007. It was just a bunch of students and teachers getting together, um, just enjoying photography. I never had so much fun taking images in my life. Talking about photography, taking pictures. 
and doing different um, workshops. Started with about eight people and grew to about uh, 17 people who were attending regular weekly meetings. Photo clubs like hand-in-hand -hand with classes as well. So, you know, I, I felt comfortable to, you know, just swoop right in and, you know, enter in a few activities like, you know, taking pictures that I would shoot at home or just on the fly and I would bring them into the club and we would discuss uh, um, shots that we've taken. It's a lot of fun to get around other photographers and uh, share ideas and new things that are going on. It's, it, it's pretty cool. It's a good dialogue. In order to join the club, you don't have to be a photo major. It is open to all CCP students and faculty. Any member of the school community, whether they're staff, employees, teachers, any CCP students, not necessarily photography. And some of them have an interest in photography, some of them want to learn more about photography. We do have a good number of uh, non-photography majors in the club. Everyone can uh, make better pictures. And also, uh, we uh, welcome uh, alumni to come back anytime to join in the activities or regular meetings. So it's really very wide open. Anybody can join the club. What benefits can we obtain by participating in the club? It is very beneficial that um, students come in the photo club and learn. It's something that is really fun. It's something, it's like a side hobby where people can come and enjoy themselves. We can learn something from each other and learn to do things that we don't like to do. They get a chance to meet different people and learn how to work with them. You get what you do from a t totally different perspective. Getting a lot of connections through different teachers, um, students, um, and just being out there and being able to talk to others without fear and being able to um, just do a lot with the photography. Also, you can join the club in order to participate in the activities. Frequently have guest speakers uh, we do uh, some laboratory experiments. Uh, we've done some image making in the dark room, photo safari, which means the members meet at a certain time at 2nd and Market Streets in Philadelphia, and then we wander around very slowly taking photographs of uh, natural environment, objects, people, whatever. And uh, that's often a very gratifying activity, and we've seen many, many wonderful photos come out of that. While you're out there, you share technique and you see how other people do things and you get new ideas and it's, that, that's a lot of fun to me. Amazing. That's just one of the many interesting paths that the college has to offer. Well, that's it for today. I want to thank my guest, Kirsten Quinn, and thank all of you for tuning in. You have been watching Focal Point, the Community College of Philadelphia's magazine show on CCPTV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. All the segments for Focal Point are produced by the students in the digital video production curriculum. I'm Darlene Munts, a student in the Communications Arts Curriculum. See you next time.